Okay, thanks for joining me. Um, today I'm doing a quick revision video on T accounts. Um, arguably the most important thing to learn when it, when it comes to accounting because this underpins everything. It underpins the debit and credit whole side of accounting, why your balance sheet balances, why your trial balance balances, and it's just simply because of T accounts and how uh, they work, the method behind them. So what I've laid out at the top, I've done it in previous videos, is sort of like the basis of how T accounts work. So I've got assets and expenses on my debit side and liabilities, incomes and capital on my credit side. What does this basically mean? Well, it simply means if assets were at the top, so the title of my T account, they go up on the debit. So the opposite, liabilities. Say if liabilities were at the top, they go up on the credit, then down on the debit. So I thought I'd break them down into individuals. So an asset, let's, let's just say motor vehicles for uh, for example. If we buy a motor vehicle, what are we going to do with our asset account? It's going to increase on the debit side. So imagine if you have some depreciation, that's just going to go on the credit side, so that brings it down. So if you think about the opposite to that, we have, say we had depreciation to an asset, we're going to credit our asset account. Well, what's depreciation? It's an expense, so we'll increase our expense. So you see how they all link up. So if you have depreciation, it'll be an expense, debited, but it'll also affect our balance sheet because it will decrease the value of our asset on the credit of the asset. So let's go on to liabilities. Um, say we owe more money to someone. That's a higher liability. We owe more people money. That goes up on the credit and down on the debit. So you see how it's working now. Liabilities go up on the debit. Assets go up, uh, sorry, liabilities go up on the credit, down on the debit. Assets go up on the debit and down on the credit. So you see how it's working now in a sense. So incomes, they go up on the credit. So say if you make a sale. So if this account was the sales account, you'd record all your sales here and all your returns um, in on the debit. So it'll decrease the amount you've sold in a sense. Capital, this is always a good one to learn, especially for uh, second year accounting. Up on the credit, down on debit. So if you have drawings, say if the owner draws money out of the business bank account, it'll go on the debit. And bank, this one's a bit different because, well it's not different, it goes up on the debit obviously, we always know that. But this is one of the only accounts where you can have a brought down on both sides. You could have a brought down on the credit, which is overdrawn, and a brought down on the debit, which is obviously good. You have money. You can't have like a brought down on the credit of the asset. You can't have a negative motor vehicles account, in a sense, can you? And you can't have a uh, negative income account, in a sense. You can't give more discount than you can uh, sales, in a sense. So, with that in mind, I decided to write a few questions out. Just a few... Uh, sort of just like transactions that have occurred and I've simplified them as much as I can just so you get, you get the raw essence of what the question is, it doesn't have loads of context around it. So simply, James buys goods for resale, so that's purchases, on cash for £400. Well, we've bought goods for resale, so that's purchases, because we intend on reselling them, they're not an, an on-current asset, are they in a sense? And we have paid on cash, so we'll just put the bank, because that cash comes out of our bank. So, purchases, what are purchases? Well, they're an expense, and we've increased our purchases, so we're just going to debit 400. And instantly you now know, because we've debited purchases, we have to credit our bank. So that's in, but, but why do you can't just simply say oh we've debited one account then we'll just we'll just credit the other just by a process of elimination, but actually we've paid by cash so we've lost four hundred pound in cash, our bank account goes down on the credit. So you see it it just works it's not simply just oh one's that then we can just eliminate and find the answer to the other. So there's always a reason behind it. So Tesco purchased a non-current asset on credit for nine hundred pound. So we'll just pretend the non-current asset is a motor vehicle. So our motor vehicles account, and on, we bought it on credit for nine hundred pounds. So it's on credit, 
so we can assume it's a trade creditor, also known as a payable. It's interchangeable, you can use whatever name you want. So we've purchased a non-current asset, and what I said earlier, uh, what I said earlier was assets increase on the debit, and we've increased our assets, we've bought more. So we're going to debit 900. And our creditor, well, what is it? It's a current li it's a current liability, and we've made that more general. It's a liability. They go up on the credit. We owe more people more money because we've borrowed, we a sense took a good off someone and we haven't paid them yet, so we owed them that money. So that's also credit 900. So you see how it's working. All you have to do is just look at what the um, the thing at the top of the T account. So purchase, expense, motor vehicle, asset, trade creditor, liability. Just make it as general as possible for yourself and then decide where does it go up? What side does this account go up on? So this one's a little bit trickier. So Rachel sells goods and receives £390. However, Rachel gave a discount of £10 for payment by cash. Right, well, she sold goods, so that's easy enough, that's sales. Uh, however, Rachel gave a discount of £10 for payment by cash, so we'll say bank, because she's received money by, she's received money, and she gave a discount, so she gave a discount to someone else. Discount allowed. So let's deal with the easy one first, which is we've received £390 by cash. So as we can see by our bank T account, it goes up on the debit. So we're going to debit 390 So why do we have three T accounts? Well, we're going to find out now. we sold goods which have an intended selling price of £400. Just because we've received £390 does not mean the sales were £390. The sales actually worth the discount plus what we we got received, what we received, in a sense. So it's just £390 plus £10. So we're going to credit our sales £400. Why are we crediting our sales? Well, it's an income, and credits uh, incomes go up on the credit. However, what you can notice from previous questions is the debit 400, credit 400. Debit 900, credit 900, they equal each other, so the trial balance will equal each other. However, this doesn't. We've got a credit 400, but a debit of 390. However, we've got a discount allowed to deal with. So, what is discount allowed? Well, it's an expense. Where would it go in our income statement? Well, it'd go down as an expense, because in a sense, we've lost an income, in a sense. So, that's going to go up on our debit. And we gave a £10 discount. Well, it's an expense, so 10 so you see how it works now, we've got a credit of 400 and two debits which add up to 400, so it works now. So you see, it just works, <laughs> it's, it's as easy as that really. Rent for the previous year accrued by 150. So rent, and we're going to have an accruals T account. This is one of the things I didn't learn whilst I was at college, was accruals and prepayments T accounts, which I probably should have done. Um, be prepared to do that if you do go to university because it can get a bit trickier. So, what's rent? Well, it's a it's an expense. What's accruals? It's a liability. Where would it go in your balance sheet? It'd go in your current liabilities, wouldn't it? So it's accrued by one fifty. So rent, well, one fifty expense and accrual, uh, one fifty is a liability. So one fifty credit. So. Let's take it from the opposite viewpoint. Say if the rent was prepaid by 150, we keep rent here, but we'd have a prepayment in our second tier account. Well, the name would be prepayment. And what? Well, prepayment's an asset, so we debit 150. So we'd credit 150 of rent. But I'm not simply just going to say, oh, it's credit 150 of rent because we've debited the other account. It's because. Say if you have a prepayment in your income statement, what do you do that one with that prepayment? You take it away from the expense. And this is an expense T account in a sense. It is an expense T account. And the prepayment decreases the expense, doesn't it? So we're going to have to go on the opposite side to what increases the expense. Because we're doing the opposite. We're decreasing our expenses with a prepayment in a sense. I hope that's, I hope that's understandable. Okay. The owner of Jet Limited, I'll just make him random names up, of course. The owner of Jet Limited introduced £4,000 of capital into the business bank account. So, bank again. And he's introduced, he or she has introduced £4,000 of capital. 
So they've introduced £4,000 of capital into the bank account. Well, that must mean money in. We've brought it in. So bank debit 4000 And capital account. Well, capital goes up on the credit, as I've shown here. So I'm just going to credit 4000 So let's say it's the other way around. Say the owner drew uh, 2000 of drawings out. Well, we'd credit the bank because we've lost 2000 in the business. However, this is now drawings. And drawings goes against capital. So we just uh, debit £2,000 because it goes against capital drawings. So yeah. Okay, final point. A vehicle with a net book value of £12,000 had £3,000 depreciation this year. So imagine it's the end of the year and we've just charged £3,000 of depreciation in the income statement. So we've got a net, so we'll just say the broad down is 12,000. And this is our vehicles account. And this is going to be our depreciation account. So I did something very similar to this earlier when I was explaining the concept of the account. So 3,000 depreciation is an expense, so we're just going to debit 3,000. Also, what does this depreciation do? Well, it decreases the value of our asset, doesn't it, simply? So it's just going to go against the drawdown in our asset account. So 3000 So now we have, basically, essentially, we have a vehicle now worth 9000 Well, the total amount of the vehicles is worth 9000 And uh, the depreciation corresponds to that. So basically, what to take from this video? Um, the, just this, basically. If you know... Just as long as you know uh, the basis of these six accounts, I'd say. Obviously, do your own revision. Uh, go through all the uh, past papers. Uh, do all the T-account questions. Make Just make sure you know what side each account goes up on. So if you think instantly think, oh, I've got a motor vehicle. That must mean an asset. That must mean it goes up on the debit. So just try, try to chain the words together in a sense. So think rent. Oh, my rent. I have to pay my rent, that's an expense. My expenses increase because I have to pay it, goes up on the debit. I've made a sale, a sales and income, it goes up on the credit. So just always just try and chain your words together so you know how they all link up. That's the, that's the basis of tier accounts, they all link together because everything has a debit and everything has a credit, everything has an equal and opposite effect in a sense. So uh, that's about it. Any emails, any uh, questions to my email, which is in the description any suggestions for videos and uh, thanks for watching.